Cameron Creations. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. Today we're going to make a card for Make the Cards Challenge number 38 and it's to use the color green. And we're making a simple camo background. I have lots of friends that hunt, guys and girls. So we're using a mix of Distress Oxide inks. We're using Rustic Wilderness, Peeled Paint, Forest Moss, Vintage Photo, Ground Espresso, and a touch of black soot. I'm making the background very similar to how you would create a galaxy background, except we're not going to cover everything. You don't have to have Distress Oxide inks to create this background. You can use your dye inks. You could also start with a colored piece of paper in a dark green or a mid-tone green and create all of the areas of different colors over top of that. You wouldn't have to ink blend so much because browns are going to show up on that. I do recommend, however, if you use colored cardstock that you use either a Distress Oxide ink or a pigment ink and then dry your cardstock really well. The reason I say that is because you still want those colors to show up, but you're just not going to have to blend as much if you start with a colored cardstock. Putting dye ink on that, that color is going to absorb and it's going to be a little bit different color, but you can still get it that way. I'm using domed blenders for this instead of just the regular flat round sponges on my mini blending tools. Several options are available for blending tools nowadays. You can use mini blenders. You can still go back to the old standard of the round sponges. And you can also use your brushes, the things that look like makeup brushes. They come in a rainbow of colors or solid gray handles, so they are absolutely amazing. But for my Distress Oxide inks, I really do like my blenders here. Now, one thing that I tend to always do is end up putting my fingers in ink and then getting inky prints all over everything. So if I'm ink blending a background or something like that, then I'm going to put a post-it note or a piece of paper under my fingers so I don't get fingerprints all over my project. Another reason I went with an ink blended background with Distress Oxide inks is because of their reactive properties. I'm gonna sprinkle water on this at the end to get some of those reactive properties to show up and have those lighter spots in my background. Between my colors, I'm putting down a layer of that color and then I'm going back to the colors that surround it and blending the two together. So right now I'm using Vintage Photo, but I'm going to go back and pick up some of that Rustic Wilderness and that Forest Moss and Peeled Paint in those areas and blend over each, of each other so that that color is a little bit less obvious in that transition. It's still very much there, but a little bit less obvious in the transition. There's my water. I literally unscrewed the top from my spritzer bottle and just flicked those water spots all over the place. Now the next thing was I wanted to use this deer stencil from Maker Forte. Here's the thing. I didn't know how this was going to work. This was an experiment. And I thought, oh, well, I want, to, I want to use this stencil as a stamp. Well, in order to ink that stencil up, I had to pull out my domed blender and pounce the ink on the stencil. And that's how I did it. I thought that I would have enough pressure just pressing the stencil down onto my cardstock. And it did not get the center part of the stencil. It just did an outline, which was absolutely a fantastic mistake because I love the look at the end of this. In order to get the stencil to actually put the ink down on the paper, I ended up using my die cutting machine and running, running it through my die cutting machine with an embossing mat over top of it. So I finished inking up the stamp, um, the stencil with my ink, and then I pressed my paper over top of it. It gave me a really good outline, but it just wasn't dark enough. You'll see here I'm pressing down really hard, but then I get this outline and I didn't get the center part of the stencil, which was fine. And I didn't want to just do negative space on the stencil. I really wanted to have the whole deer outlined on here. So I'm going to use an embossing mat and run that through my die cutting machine. And I did do that twice. And it still shifted on me with even with tape on it and that's okay so you can see that outline that's offset a little bit 
but it's still absolutely gorgeous and I think it gave it a little bit more. Now my friend Nikki sent me this deckled edge uh, paper trimmer and I pulled this bad boy out and I said this is going to be perfect for this card and I literally just stuck the edge of the paper. I didn't measure anything. I just literally stuck just a itty bitty teeny tiny little line over the edge just enough to cover the whole entire uh, decorative edge and trimmed it off so it would have those ratty looking edges on the side of it. And then I'm going to ink the edges of my paper and I did the ground espresso first and then I'm going to take some black soot and go around the edges of it and then I'm going to actually go over top of it again with the ground espresso, espresso again just to give it a little more depth to the edge of the card. My card base is going to be dark brown cardstock, and I'm this card is finished size at eight and a half by three and three quarters inches wide. So it's a slim line card. And this was one of those cards that was kind of a series of follies the entire time. I actually die cut a bunch of letters to to put happy hunting on the front of it, and I die cut all of them, stacked them up. And I ended up not liking the font. I just did it didn't fit well on the front of this card. So I pulled out my fonts on my silhouette cameo and I made my own sentiment. And then I painted them using some old glimmer mist that I had. And I'm a big purveyor of using what you have on hand instead of continuing to buy stuff and stock in your shelves with stuff that you already have comparable of. Uh, there are plenty of products on the market that are shimmer mists that you can do this with. This one is a dark brown coppery color and I will include those uh, comparable products over in the description and in my product list below because I have this on hand. I, I have a bunch of different colors of glimmer mists so I continue to use them uh, even though finding Tattered Angels glimmer mist from forever ago is really really hard. Now if you have mica powders that have different colors to them you can do it with those as well. If you're going to do something like this make sure that you let your letters dry completely. I stacked them up because I cut these three times and stacked them up and glued all my letters together. Uh, make sure you paint the edges of your letters or use colored cardstock, one of the two, and make sure that your letters completely dry because they are very wet after you do this because you're just taking regular cardstock and painting them uh, and make sure that it, they're really really dry before you put them on your card especially if you use distress oxide inks because the dampness from the letters will react that with the ink on your paper and it'll make a halo around them so just keep that in mind just some tips from uh, for using distress oxide inks with other wet products just make sure that your products are dry and that kind of thing before you put them on your paper and this only took me I know it looks like it take, took me forever to do this and it was really tedious but it really wasn't and it was super relaxing for me so definitely you could cut these out of brown cardstock and put them on the your, you know your card out of your favorite font absolutely and then just add a little bit of Nouveau shimmer pen I added some gold shimmer to the two H's just to make them stand out a little bit more and uh, that was it and I'm going to go ahead and glue these on the front of the card. I used my straight edge ruler that has the T-square on it so I could make sure that these were aligned on the front of my card. And I had already glued this to my card base and a lot of times I have trouble with my card bases closing so I will stick a piece of washi tape on the inside of my cards just to close them down while I'm finishing up doing like a sentiment on the front of the card or something uh, just to hold it in place. I always like to dry fit my letters if I'm doing free letters that does that don't have like an opening or anything and dry fit my letters to make sure that they're going to fit centered where I want them. And I did these just below the top of the dare head there and I'm using a needle point bottle and I'm just doing dots of glue 
on the back side of my letter, letters in just teeny tiny little dots of glue with that needle tip bottle. I'm using Elmer's Glue All. It does not wrinkle my paper, it has a really good hold, and it does give me just a few more moments to move stuff around than other glues that I've used do. And I'm kind of persnickety about some things, so I like that few extra moments. I also like that it's a great big bottle at a really decent price, and I can refill my needle tip bottle about six times out of a regular like school size bottle and it's really really cheap and really really easy to find so I'm very much enjoying that ink. To make sure that my letters and things hold down I'll place an acrylic block over top of them and let them dry for a few moments before I move on to something else just to make sure that my letters aren't going to go anywhere. Now make the cards challenge is a weekly card challenge. It's weekly right now uh, it might go to bi-weekly after the first of the year. We're not real sure yet. We're still talking about it. But right now it's a weekly card challenge and it's super fun. It can, can be combined with other challenges. So go over to make the cards challenge and see what the other design team members have made using the color green because if it's just a simple color, it's no telling what in the world you're going to get. I went with camo this week because it's hunting season starting and I got a lot of friends out there hunting. So I just thought it was kind of cute to do this. Thank y'all so much for joining me. The cards at the end of the video are for pictures so you can see all of it and also check over on the blog. Y'all have an amazing day.